He's a terminally ill billionaire. He shaved his head and got ready for a craniotomy. Although Edward is rich. He even owns the whole hospital. But he's still upset. Because no one cares about him. Before he was hospitalized, someone would accompany him to have a big meal every day. And he is now. Only one assistant is with him. He was unaccompanied during his surgery. What is the use of having money? Would you say his life was a success? Fortunately, the craniotomy was a success. After surgery. The top doctor said to Edward. There's only so much we can do. The next treatment will be on your own. Reached this stage. Healing becomes a long battle. Now even money seems so powerless. What he needs most now. Is the company of family. He is really lonely. He is worth over 100 million. He can only lie in bed and whine every day. And he is very envious of Carter on the opposite side. Because his wife comes to deliver meals every day. Even the children often visit him. Edward can only comfort himself in his heart every day. Although he was envious. But just don't say it. Instead, he was angry with Carter every day. Carter doesn't have time to talk to him either. Flipping through various history books. He is a low-level wage earner. Although he has not seen much of the world. But he has read many, many books. It can also be said to be a walking encyclopedia. Edward is just the opposite. He has no culture. But rich. So he's very upset with Carter. He wants a single room. Because he doesn't want to see a half-dead zombie lying beside him. But soon he also became like this. Or vomiting. Or non-stop excretion. Tonight, Carter's teeth cracked in pain. Edward was in so much pain that night. They have the same pain. So the two gradually became acquainted with each other. Occasionally sit together and play poker. Share happy things. The two will also go for a walk together. Telling about their own chemotherapy experience. In this way, they disliked each other from the beginning and slowly turned into friends. When Carter is free. He would write his bucket list on a piece of yellow paper. One day, the two were lying on the bed and watching TV intently. At this time the doctor came in suddenly, he brought two bad news. Edward only has half a year to live. Carter has only one year to live. At this time, the faces of the two were full of fear. It turns out that regardless of rich or poor, skin color and personality, face life and death, they are the same people. Yeah, in this world. How many people can face death without fear? Carter directly crumpled up the bucket list he wrote and threw it away. He felt as if he had been sentenced to death with reprieve. What bullshit romantic wishes can he talk about? The next day. When the assistant comes to the ward. He picked up Carter's bucket list. Edward saw that it was clearly written. Help a complete stranger for the good. Laugh until I cry. Drive a Mustang Shelby. Carter got a little pissed off. Who knows that Edward is still throwing cold water. He said that Carter's wish is too boring. After speaking, he picked up the pen. Write a few more crazy wishes directly on it. Like, skydiving. Tattoo. Around the world, and more. Carter took it over to have a look. There is also a ridiculous wish written on the paper. Kiss the most beautiful girl in the world. Almost didn't laugh Carter to death. It's a bit of a jerk but it's okay. The two made fun of each other. Edward said let's go and finish the list. After all, he is so poor now that all he has left is money. As long as it's about money, he can fix anything. Carter is a little scared. Then Edward said. Then you can only stay at home until you die. Although it is good to have family. But they're just as powerless now. At home during this time. All he brings to his family is pain. Might as well take a look at this beautiful world in the last time. Cart figured it out. But his wife is vehemently against it. How can a dying person not stay with his family? At this time, Carter has made up his mind, and he is going to fulfill his last wish. So he followed Edward away. With a bucket list in hand, the two embark on a journey that belongs only to them. The first thing they want to accomplish is the last wish of skydiving. Although there is only one year left to live, Carter is still very scared. He was so nervous and yelled that he didn't want to play anymore. But the next second. At this time, it is obviously impossible to go back. Edward had a smirk on his face and immediately followed Carter. Then Edward and Carter exchanged words in the air. I hate your rot gut! As a result, Carter opened his parachute too early. What about Edward? After waiting for a long time, he didn't open the safety buckle. Instead, it frightened the coach behind. Pull the damn cord! In the end, the two landed safely. First wish fulfilled. The second thing is to get a tattoo. Edward is excited. 
but Carter is determined not to tattoo. He believes that everything in the body is given by his parents and cannot be changed at will. No matter how Edward prods him, Carter always stands his ground. The third wish is to drive Carter's favorite sports car. Edward directly bought Carter's favorite sports car. Two people put on professional driver suits. Compete on the racetrack. As a car mechanic, Carter has always loved the Mustang. However, due to the burden of the family, he never had the opportunity to own a sports car that belonged to him. And for Edward, who is worth hundreds of millions, it's really just a simple matter. Then they started traveling around the world. First came to a beautiful town. In top restaurants they eat expensive caviar. At this time Edward accidentally mentioned that he himself has a daughter. But now they have broken off the relationship and no longer communicate with each other. Carter thinks it's funny. Directly wrote down the wish of Edward to reconcile with his daughter on the bucket list. But Edward was not happy and blotted out that wish. Carter was embarrassed and got up and went to the bathroom to calm down. Edward waited for a long time but did not see Carter coming back, he thought Carter was angry. After thinking about it, Edward went to the bathroom to find Carter. Edward went to the bathroom only to find a lot of blood on Carter's clothes. Edward is in a hurry. But at this time, he got a call from Carter's wife. The woman begged him to give her husband back to her. Because she wanted to be by her husband's side when he died. After Edward answered the phone, he came to persuade Carter to go home for treatment. But Carter guessed right away that his wife had called. Carter is unwilling to go home. He said he and his wife have long had an estrangement. He feels he has spent the first half of his life serving his family. Now, he wants to keep the rest of the time to himself. The reason why he came out to play with Edward was actually to escape the family life that oppressed him. No way, the journey has to continue. They came to Africa to see lions and zebras. Come to the pyramids in Egypt to watch the sunset. There, Edward revealed the secret that his daughter and himself were no longer in touch. It turned out that Edward's daughter ignored his dissuasion and secretly married an unreliable man. His daughter suffered domestic violence after marriage. After the second time something like this happened, Edward got a gangster to settle the matter. The man disappeared from their lives after that. However, the daughter not only does not thank her father, she even misses the man who committed domestic violence. So the two broke off their relationship. Edward thinks what he did is justified and has a clear conscience. Even if he did it all over again, he would still do it. Travel continues. They ride motorcycles on the Great Wall of China. Then they came to the Himalayas. They're going to fulfill their last wish. But that day they encountered a blizzard. It's impossible to climb up the mountain. But more regrettably, this blizzard won't stop until next spring. Obviously, they certainly can't wait for that time. They came to Hong Kong. In the bar, a beautiful woman sat down next to Carter. She offered to shake hands. Active conversation. The two chatted and chatted, and they also developed emotions smoothly. Beauty invites him to her room. Carter was instantly shy. But he thought about it for a while and declined. Because he suddenly remembered his wife who was still at home. Beauty left. Carter went back to the room and said to Edward. You found that girl, right? Edward said yes. Carter says you're smart, success makes me miss my family. Edward just smiled at him faintly. Yeah, it's time to go back after being out for so long. So the two stopped traveling around the world and went home directly by plane. Before going home, Carter negotiated with Edward's assistant and asked him to drive the car to Edward's daughter's house. It turned out that Edward helped Carter remember his family. Carter also wants to help him in this way. But all he got in return for his kindness was Edward's anger. He can't let go of his face and admit his mistakes to his daughter. No matter what Carter said, he just refused to go in, and he was so angry that he tore up the bucket list. Edward left without looking back. Since then, the two have parted ways. Edward returns to his mansion. The house is indeed luxurious, but it has no warmth. He called a lot of women to fill his emptiness. But in the end he couldn't hold back and cried against the glass. On the other side, Carter returned to the embrace of the family. Regained the warmth brought by his family. His interest in his wife was also rekindled. Tonight, his wife prepared a love surprise for him. He's so nervous, as shy as he was when he first fell in love. But when the wife changes clothes and comes out, Carter has fallen to the ground and his legs are twitching. Wait for Edward to get to the hospital. Only then did he learn that Carter's cancer cells had metastasized to his brain. Carter has shaved her head for surgery. But this time the risk is really high and the success rate is extremely low. When Carter's wife walks away, Carter gave Edward a piece of paper. 
It says. Edward's favorite civet coffee is actually processed from civet feces. This is also indirectly laughing at Edward often drinking cat excrement. Edward just finished reading. Carter burst out laughing. Edward laughed too. They laughed so happily that they even shed tears. Then Carter pulled out the bucket list. Crossed out, laugh until I cry, with a pen. It turned out that after the quarrel that day, he secretly picked up the bucket list. Glued them back together. He didn't forget their wish. Then, he gave Edward their bucket list. Now the rest of the wishes can only be fulfilled by Edward alone. In the end, Carter still failed to survive. He passed away during the operation. Edward also left the hospital. He finally listened to Carter and knocked on his daughter's door. They didn't have the quarrel they imagined. In fact, his daughter has already forgiven him. Only then did he realize that happiness is within reach. Even more surprising. There is also Edward's little granddaughter at her daughter's house. Edward seeing his granddaughter for the first time. He was so happy that he didn't know what expression to make. He hugged his granddaughter nervously, and kissed her gently on the face. Edward once again granted a wish. Kiss the most beautiful girl in the world. At Carter's funeral. Edward crossed out one of Carter's wishes again. Help a complete stranger for the good. He is that stranger. It was Carter who helped him find happiness. A few months later. Edward also passed away. His assistant climbed Mount Everest. Put the ashes of Edward and Carter in the graves here. They finally fulfilled their last wish. Witness something majestic. If you ask me what is the meaning of life. I think. In a limited life. Must try to make our wishes and dreams come true. I hope that when I am dying, I will not leave any regrets. Human life is like flowing water. Only when it hits aisles and reefs can it create beautiful waves.